Mr. Cartoon. Is that a Forgive me, I'm eating. Clutch is starting to slip on the bike. So a little scoot scoot's gonna be getting the kid to go clutch cover and clutch. <clears throat> so hopefully this should be pretty straightforward. But uh, we're gonna film all this anyway. I don't really see how this would be difficult. I pulled cases off the side of four wheelers and stuff. I'm gonna bring another light over here so I can get some better lighting for you guys. But we got this, and forgive my mess, I got mess everywhere. This is the Kitako clutch cover that we're going to be putting on. And I like this, even if like I didn't need to put the clutch on, I've been wanting to get this simply because I can see the oil level through the sight glass, and I have an oil filter. And came with our fancy little tool, gasket, and the Koso, hold on, hold on. Wouldn't you know the battery died as I'm saying, hold on. So we got the Closo, the Co Closo, Coso, clutch plates, discs, and springs. So we'll be putting all of them in. And this is basically the kit. And I'm not going to get into oil because everybody freaks out about what oil you use. I'm using a Castrol. That's all I'm going to say because I don't feel like dealing with the trolling in the haters so look at that it's even marked outside oh sweet they are all right so let's go and uh, drain the oil out of this thing the drain plug let's walk through this real quick so i can set this thing down i want to eat more chips so the drain plug is this one hold on this one We'll drain the oil out, and these are all just little eight millimeter bolts. And I highly recommend you break them all loose evenly. And looks like we're gonna have to probably release the clutch cable from the the clutch lever here, and. I don't think we'll have to take any of this other stuff off. Maybe. I don't know if it'll clear the brake lever. We might have to do something about moving this out of the way so the uh, cover can come off. So, let's just get started. Drain the oil out of it. And uh, let's get to some modification. All right, so the oil is drained. I took the drain pan away a little bit too quick and like an idiot, dropped a little bit of oil. It's okay, I have a rag that's ready to be thrown out anyway, so there we go. Uh, the only thing I've really done that I needed to remove other than remove the uh, clutch cable was I actually took out the bottom bolt of the peg and loosened this one so I can move this out of the way because I couldn't get the case to come off. So now should be able to uh, remove, oh my gosh, that's so much easier. And there that is. I highly recommend doing that for the sake of a bolt and a half. So now that we are here, we need to pull out the oil screen, which is right down here. And this is actually our clutch. And the clutch discs and clutch plates is all right in here. And I believe 
Is that the oil spinner? You people probably know more than me. I'm an idiot. I think it's this. I think that's the oil spinner. I don't know. I believe it is. We're actually going to be removing that. Whether that's the oil spinner or not. Um, wherever the oil spinner really is. I'm pretty sure that's it. We're removing it. And again, remember to check the screen down here. And... That's got to be the oil spinner. We're, we're removing the oil spinner. But uh, that, that's where we're at right now. Um, we've got to get the, uh, the clutch lever out of here, obviously. But uh, we'll get to that in a moment. So uh, that's where we're at thus far. Yes, we want to remove these three bolts. This is the oil spinner cover. This is, in fact, the oil spinner. We want to remove these three bolts. We're going to have to get our uh, our tool that goes over the gear, which I'm assuming is back in here. It's going to hold all of this so we can actually remove the uh, oil spinner itself. And this has to come off regardless because we need the clutch discs and stuff out of here. And by the looks of things, let's see, I'm seeing our clutch springs. These three bolts come out, removes the uh, clutch. Ooh, look at there. Removes the uh, clutch springs. And when those come out, I'm assuming this plate comes out. And then the discs and pressure plates underneath there come out as well. So I'm going to do this first. These three bolts get the tool affixed, and I'll bring you guys back in a second. So we got this fancy little tool in finally. Um, I've got everything spread around. I've been trying to do this as quickly as possible because I really like to ride to work tomorrow. I had this primed, it was like nine bucks. This is the uh, tool in question. And I put it on my air impact and it knocked that, uh, knocked this locking collar off real quick and then the oil spinner slipped right off so what we did was we splined on this collar here there's a sprung washer that goes here and an o-ring that goes inside this outer lip make sure you oil that o-ring gently slip it on the shaft and we're going to torque that down to between 45 and 50 foot pounds of torque at 64 newton meters per uh Kitako and let's see we're gonna torque that down then we've got to work on the uh, OEM clutch cover for the uh, clutch shaft dipstick etc we need to put those in probably uh, sw check the o-rings make sure we don't need to swap them out so we basically need to pull out this shaft, okay, in our workings here. And put that in the new clutch cover, which we can do on the on the bench over there. And then we can go ahead and move on to uh, remounting all this thing and changing out the clutch discs. So what we're doing first is we're removing the clutch rod. Now the lever should be next. It should slide up out of here. And it does slide straight up out, including the spring, everything else. And we also have the O-ring right here. I am going to wipe this off. I feel some residual debris on it. There we go. We are listening to Grand Tour. Okay. Make sure we get our dowel pins out. I have one that has been left in the, uh, the block of the engine. And we have another one. Right here. 
that uh, just comes right on out. And he should go back in right there, but I'm not seeing... I am not seeing a spot for it. So I'm probably going to leave it in. Let's go check the block real quick and make sure we have everything out. I thought there were three. Oh, there are three. Okay, so there's one. These are still on the block. There's one there, and there's one there. So, and we do have that torque down. I did 49 foot pounds, 65 or so Newton meters. Book calls for 64. I always go at least one over. So, we have removed that. And out of my own curiosity of the state of the engine, the oil looks like it was okay, and I have changed it once. There's not much debris in there, considering it's a wet clutch. I'm pretty happy with it. Going over our sheet here that came with the clutch cover. Hold on, we're having to talk over Jeremy Clarkson. He never shuts up, monkey. So this all should slide back in. But what we want to do is get some oil that's left. If you don't have any oil still sitting in your cover, go ahead and get some. Put some oil over the O-ring for sure and the shaft itself. Especially that O-ring. We don't have a replacement. We don't want to have to wait and go buy one. The goal is to get this done tonight so we can go to work with it tomorrow. Okay. All right, let's move this out of the way, get this in shot here. So it literally just pushes right in. I mean, it's actually a clever design. The, uh, the clutch rod is what holds this pin in place. It's actually a very clever, very clever. I am gonna get some more oil if I can drag it out here and put it on the end of this pin. I did already put the dipstick in so the dowel pins the dowel pins are in the block the dipstick isn't even though we don't need it but there's a hole for it so I put it in obviously we got the clutch rod and shaft let's see all right, we need to put oil down in here in this bearing for sure before we reassemble. I'll probably just pour some in there. And I will most likely pour some down in this shaft here. And I'll put some more in here. But uh, this is just half the project. We are here to actually change a clutch, not just a clutch cover. So we're going to set this aside for now, and we're going to make sure again, because I, I might not hit on it again. You want to put oil in here, in there, want to put some more oil around the clutch shaft here, especially the mechanism where it moves, okay? I'm probably going to put oil just about everywhere where it looks like oil might go. Everywhere. Down in here for sure. Anywhere where a bearing is going to be. Or where shaft is going to ride we're going to put some oil in it that bearing for sure you don't want that pilot shaft bearing to go out so let's go back to the engine and look at swapping out yeah you can see this is just for the clutch cover see we're back to installing the clutch cover from here on nothing about the the actual disc see 
and that's the oil spinner we've removed and I am going to double check the torque on the uh, bolts that hold the oil filter in over here so we need to work back over here and real quickly for sure we need to take these three 10 millimeter bolts out and that should remove the retaining ring for the clutch discs and uh, friction plates and the springs and now this is spring loaded the springs are behind this so when you take this out you're going to want to go easy all right and this is that other hole where I said we need to put oil this bottom shaft around here make sure you torque that we're going to put grease and some oil well grease no oh geez oil in these places like this I mean worst case you can go and put your finger in the used oil and just wipe it around it we need it to be lubricated before it builds up oil pressure so nothing has any premature j premature wear so that's where we're at these three bolts we're gonna start pulling this clutch off all right that was pretty straightforward had to break out our fancy little tool again to get off the smaller lock nut there and there was a washer behind it so we removed the spring retaining plate whatever you want to call that and then the springs came out and underneath that we had this nut and this washer and in the clutch basket was the uh, clutch assembly so what we basically do from here is we pull this top plate off and we replace all of these rings these are the clutch discs and clutch plates so we're going to swap them out for all of our new stuff over here in our new springs and we're good to go so where we're at these three bolts go in about nine foot pounds is what i put them at be sure that you're uh either using the proper <coughs> bless me the proper uh size torque wrench or making sure that your 3 8 which is what mine is is uh pretty damned calibrated so you don't ring these out because uh, you're gonna have way too much arm for these little bolts so this literally lines up like legos to go in there and that's all back in so we're going to tighten up this little plate down here on the bottom where it keeps oil in it and I think we're about ready to put some oil on these shafts and in the uh, pilot bearing for this shaft and make sure there's oil in them and bolt this case back up make sure you check the gasket and your gasket surface is clear i'm going to check mine over once real quick and make sure it's all cleaned off but uh, luckily for me most of the gasket came off so should be pretty straightforward from here on out as far as reassembling this thing it should go even quicker since we've already taken it apart so uh, let's get to it and get this thing back on the road so simple enough make sure you get it lined on and it goes on easy it should just bump on if you're at the press it on or pull it on you're not lined up make sure you got it lined up good so you can just basically thump it on and when you tighten these bolts down around here go diagonally on them and we are looking for 10 newton meters which is basically about like seven or eight seven or eight pounds or something like that so i don't need to be on too tight make sure you go diagonal with them and uh, once we get done with that, clean up your old parts and stuff you got laying down here. Like I've got, I got to get the oil spinner and stuff picked up. And I'm going to get rid of some of these tools, put some of them up. And then we're basically just going to reassemble the bike. Uh, the only real things that we've taken off are we've uh, taken loose the uh, lower rear set there and loosened the, the upper on it so we can rotate it down. And we put the clutch spring back on. Now this is probably going to... I'd say probably 
This might need to be adjusted. I really don't know yet. Um, as far as the cable clutch, depending on how bad yours was versus what clutch you're going in, you might or might not need that. So we're just going to keep that in mind before we start riding around. Make sure we have that adjusted properly. Do not forget you need your oil in it. You want to make sure that your oil cooler banjo bolts are tight if you're not installing an oil cooler just yet, which I am not yet, but I currently have everything that I need to do so. And again, make sure your oil filter bolts, your oil filter cover bolts are tight. Make sure that your dipstick plug is in there tight enough. We don't want stuff falling out going down the road while we're test riding and enjoying the fact that we've got a good clutch. So go around these diagonally, make sure that they're all nice, snug and tight, your gasket's on there. Put some oil in it first things first, before you start assembling all this, put your oil in it, start it up, make sure everything's running properly before you assemble all this other stuff and uh, you end up having to take it off because of some silly mistake. So that's where we're at, tighten these up, Put some oil in it. I'm going to put the exhaust back on so I don't wake up all the neighbors. And I'm going to start this. Well, I'll probably just put the header pipe on. And uh, we're going to start this up. Make sure everything's running properly. The clutch is functioning as it, it should. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to ride this to work for the rest of the week. And we'll call it heavy duty. All in all, I'm pretty excited to see how this clutch performs. I can already tell you immediately I need more free play in my clutch. I can feel it dragging. If I pull the clutch in, try to shift it, I can feel it. So I know for a fact that uh, I need some more free play on my clutch there. So anyway. Overall, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy. Get to ride it into work next couple days. Probably ride it in on the weekend. Start putting some miles on it. Because now that it's got the clutch in it, there's really nothing stopping me from just riding it throughout the summer. It's it's basically done. Like there's nothing more I want to do to the engine. There's nothing more like it does everything I want it to do. It'll cruise all day at 65 miles an hour with me sitting upright on it. It'll break 70 pretty easy if I'm tucked across the flat all the way up until it hits a rev limiter. I'm, I'm perfectly content with how it is now. It's probably going to stay this way unless I get some stupid idea up in my dumb brain. I'll probably end up changing those mirrors, which I don't like, and I need to paint the belly pan. And get it blue. And I'm wanting to do this blue too. So the blue wraps around. But uh, I mean we're done. Like. The only other things on this bike I'd like to do. Are just. Edit the rear sets. As you can see I've got a mark. Or I'm going to cut them off. And start seeing how I can manipulate them. Make them where I want them to be. I mean we're, we're basically done. As far as this build is. Like this is the way it's just going to be. So. She's been good. She's modified up where I want it to be. I'm excited to see how the clutch goes. And uh, looks like we'll be getting some riding footage in coming up real lickety split. So there it is. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Got a big uh, business venture going on with a uh, friend of mine I work with. Making some shirts for the channel. So that's pretty much where we're at. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Come on, boy! Come on! Yeah!